Hi there, welcome to your third week of art uh, this trimester. Um, we are going to be making work in the style of a wonderful artist who is no longer with us. Her name was Georgia O'Keefe and she, um, we're gonna focus on her beautiful flora paintings or paintings of flowers. Um, there's a video in assignments uh, about, it's not terribly long, it's about four minutes. I want you to watch it. It just gives an, a, a nice overview of who she was and what her work was about and why it was important. Uh, so I'd like you to watch that and let me know what you think um, by just making some observations about her work or her life, something that you thought was interesting. And you can just type that out and send it through assignments. We're also going to be making a painting in the style of Georgia O'Keeffe. Um, she, get on here, let me give you an example of her work. And probably, if you don't know her work already, you have seen paintings of hers. They're reproduced often. Can you get that in there, Gusto? Mm -hmm. um, you, um, they're reproduced a lot in posters and you see them all kinds of places. So she took these flowers and she would look at them very closely, magnify them, um, get in really close so that they become difficult to know exactly what it is at first. Um, and once you start looking at it, you understand that it's a flower, but she focused in on these details and sort of captured through movement and color, the idea of the flower, uh, instead of being super concerned of making you understand exactly at first that it's a flower. A little bit abstract approach. Um, so your challenge is gonna be to, you can start, I'm, a square is really good and that's what I did in class just because it gives us a nice aerial idea. Um, but you're gonna be filling the page with a flower. So you're gonna focus in, and I have I don't have any flowers around. We're short on flowers right now. Um, there is um, an example in the assignments that have a bunch of different flowers you can look at. I'm not going for realism. So you can combine different flowers. You can um, make up the shapes of petals and whatnot. One thing I want you to avoid is the difference between something like this and making sure you don't do something like this. All right. So we're not going for the understanding that you're painting this whole flower in space in a landscape. I'm more interested in you developing and filling the whole page with the, the shapes of petals. Now, after you do this, you're gonna start, I want you to start with a brush, black paint. Again, of course, if you don't have paint, you can always use markers, but do recommend paint for this. It keeps us a little bit looser, and plus paint is just fun. You will fill in all the petals with color. Um, I challenge you to mix color, so instead of just putting out a tube um, that has orange. Maybe figure out how you're gonna mix orange. Gus, how do you make orange, the color orange with red, paint? Red and yellow? Good work, red and yellow. So. See, I know how to art. You do know how to art. Um, so uh, also there's an example of a color wheel. The color wheel is a tool. You can use the primary colors that you'll see in there that are in squares way to make secondary colors is to identify the secondary color, which is in this case, Gus. Orange. Yes, and then you look to see which primary colors are closest to it, and then you mix those and make your secondary color. Um, but just have fun with the color for sure. All right, so this would be a small example, and again, I have a square, but if you wanna go crazy, and especially if you have some like house paint lying around. Um, I always seem to have extra paint lying around, samples and extra, then you 
can maybe find yourself a big piece of cardboard or a big piece of paper. So Gus, why don't you follow me over to the floor here where I have this giant piece of cardboard and I am going to end up making a huge flower painting. Georgia O'Keeffe's paintings were like four times as big as this piece of cardboard. They were really big, a lot of them were. So when you start your painting, you will notice my little guy had something in the center. So the center of your flower, you wanna put close-ish to the center of your cardboard, your paper, whatever it is you're working. And you'll see, you can just start to develop outwards by layering. And I can keep going and I can change the shape of my petals because right now I'm not even really looking at any real flowers. I'm just thinking about my memory of flowers. Sometimes these paintings look like snowflakes in the end. You want to make sure that you have your petals stretching out all the way to the ends of the paper, the cardboard, no matter how big or how small the painting is. And you can keep layering like this. I'm running out of paint here, but I do have more. So you kind of get the idea. And I would keep going. And actually, you can even come back. I might say, you know what? I want some smaller ones in here. More pointy petals here. And then add color and I'll have this giant, lovely flower painting full of color, okay? In this time when the snow is melting and there hasn't been much color, but we're hopeful for it. And Georgia O'Keeffe is a great inspiration for giving us flowers and color in a time of the end of winter and a lot of white and gray. Um, so, there's a video about Georgia O'Keeffe, watch that. And then there is your flower painting. Can't wait to see what you guys do.